It has been just over a year now since an elite group of pilots operating from an isolated desert's airbase in the American Southwest started changing the face of aerial combat. The pilots are in the U.S., but their targets are half a world away. And now, CNN exclusive, our senior Pentagon correspondent Jamie McIntyre joins us now. He's the first news reporter to get access to the secret world of these remote control killers. He joins us now from an Air Force Base in Nevada. Good morning, Jamie. Well, good morning. The sun is just coming up here at Creech Air Force Base in Nevada, but already operations have been underway for quite a while. We've been watching the crews here get the uh, unmanned aerial vehicles, the, the pilotless planes ready for their training missions. But as you said, the real action is taking place in a combat zone half a world away. Air Force Base, 60 miles northwest of Las Vegas, a pilotless plane lands under a blistering desert sun. The remote base is home of the first unmanned attack squadron, featuring the original Predator drone, armed with a pair of Hellfire missiles, and its newer, bigger, and far more lethal cousin, the Reaper, which carries four times as much firepower. Colonel Chris Chambliss, a former F-16 fighter pilot, is the wing commander. Essence, you know, this airplane can carry the same bomb load that I carried into the fight. So it's pretty impressive capability. Can it do the same thing an F-16 could do? Yeah, everything except pull G's and go fast. And put the pilot at risk. That's exactly right. You see, the planes are deployed overseas, but the pilots are not. For over a year now, Reapers have been flying two separate round-the-clock patrols over Afghanistan from a command center that has been strictly off-limits to news cameras. Until now. CNN is the first news organization to be granted access to this operation center, and as a condition, we had to agree to show none of the imagery which remains highly classified. Still, no sooner had we walked in that we witnessed an airstrike by A-10 attack planes assisted by a Reaper and brought to us live from Afghanistan. Declassified video shows the deadly effectiveness of the Reaper, a plane that never sleeps with an eye that never blinks. So far this year, Reaper pilots have launched 64 missiles and dropped seven 500-pound bombs in Afghanistan, all from an air-conditioned office 7,000 miles away from the front, but only a short commute from the Las Vegas suburbs. So you're driving to work with all the other commuters, except you're going to war. All right. <laughs> What's that like? It's, uh, it takes you a few months to get adjusted to it, um, seeing bad guys on the screen and uh, watching them um, possibly get dispatched and then going down the street to Taco Bell for lunch is kind of a surreal effect. And we're looking live now as one of the uh, Reaper aircraft. This is the most heavily armed aircraft, uh, unmanned aircraft that the U.S. Air Force has is being uh, moved into position for one of the training missions here at Creech Air Force Base. You know, when you talk to these pilots here, they really do believe that they're on the cutting edge, uh, the future of aerial combat, uh, flying these unmanned planes thousands of miles away, using sophisticated satellite technology to bring all of the uh, uh, controls and the, the uh, visual imagery back over a satellite link. Um, and the Air Force pretty much uh, believes that too. They're putting a lot of money into building up uh, these unmanned aerial uh, platforms, uh, both for uh, both buying the planes and also a major effort to train more crews uh, to fly them from bases like this one uh, at Creech Air Force Base. And it was a very interesting scene to go into these control rooms, uh, see the pilots watching the uh, images live from both Iraq and Afghanistan, matching them up against uh, maps and imagery. And even in one case, we saw an actual strike take place. About, it was about 3 in the morning Afghanistan time uh, when we saw a series of A-10 planes uh, taking out some targets uh, in Afghanistan. Now, later today, we may be, act be able to get some actual information about what was going on in that strike that mm -hmm. we saw happen in real time. Melissa? Jamie, it's amazing. It's so cutting edge. The uh, captain you were speaking with, Captain Dean, who was talking about operating the aircraft some 7,000 miles away and then going to Taco Bell for lunch. His job is so amazing. How did he get to this point in his career? What is his experience like? Well, uh, he actually used to fly B-52 bombers, if you can believe that. So he's gone from flying a big 
uh, you know, almost Cold War aircraft. And of course, a B-52, so especially when they're outfitted with air launch cruise missiles, can be a very devastating uh, platform. But now he's he's moved to this unmanned world, this remotely controlled world of uh, piloting. And you know, one of the things I asked him was, well, you know, what would you say to somebody who thinks maybe this makes airstrikes like this too easy because you're so far removed from the target. I mean, mm -hmm. you're here in the in the comfort of uh, Las Vegas. And he said, you know, it's not like that at all. It's he said, when you step into that airplane, it's just like you're in the theater. When you step into that uh, control room, it's like you're in the cockpit of a of a plane. And it's you're doing the same sorts of things you would do if you were a fighter pilot and you take it just as seriously uh, when you have to expend munitions and take lives on the ground. Same rules of engagement apply the same concern for avoiding unintended civilian casualties, collateral damage, the same sort of thing, e even though it takes place miles away. And you know, one of the things is the pilots have a little advantage when they're actually in a plane over the target because they can they can sort of look around the cockpit, they have peripheral vision. But the pilots here flying at Creech also have advantages that pilots in a cockpit don't have. They've got more inputs that they can draw on, more uh, sensors, they've got other people monitoring things for them, more things that they can analyze to try to make a better decision about when to expend lethal force. Ah, Technology is amazing. A CNN exclusive and from our senior Pentagon correspondent Jamie McIntyre this morning who joins us from Creech Air Force Base in Nevada. Jamie, thank you.